Good morning, my name is Vinnie Vrotney, and for the past 10 months I've been living in Houston and working at the Kincaid School as the Director of, Educa or Director of Technology. What I want to do is I want to share how I've come to an answer that's been forged for, through three years of trying to bring the maker movement into schools. Like Stevie Wonder, when I was a young boy and I wish, he stated that all he wished is to see what his toys would be. And I had the benefit of having great parents who not only gave me toys, but gave me gifts that prepared me for life. From my father, I was given the gift of tools. He would give me screws, screwdrivers, and drills, and wrenches, and also an engineering mindset, the ability to take a look at a problem, come up with solutions, and build and craft that solution. From my mother, I got the gift of the love of reading. And it was one day in 1997 when I was wandering through my public library that this book, Inventing Kindergarten, caught my eye by Norman Brosterman, and I picked it up. And reading this book, began to, I began to think about what it was that the role of technology was in, tech, in the classroom. I was inspired by Frederick Froebel, who in 1838 developed the first philosophy of kindergarten. And one of the main tenets of this kindergarten was that students had free choice. Not only did they dance and sing and play, and unlike the schools today where we have an academic focus, these kindergartners were focused on students who were discovering the world through their free play and association. He also gave us six gifts, which morphed into 20 gifts that allowed students to begin to explore the world and make sense of it. Now, what is the legacy of these 20 gifts that were developed? The first of it, it spawned an industry. Milton Bradley was first set of products were the 20 gifts to be used in the kindergarten classrooms. But beyond the business, it inspired a whole generation of thinkers from Frank Lloyd Wright, who the use of gifts three, four, and five, the rectangular blocks, can be seen in all of his different architectural pieces. It inspired those the founders of Bra House, a design firm that allowed us to really understand. And it also brought us the artwork of Kandinsky and others to really push the limits in terms of what it is that we do. And these were people who were educated in this particular model. So in my time remaining, I'm ha I only have two and a half minutes, I really want to focus in on the idea of if Froebel were alive today, what would the gifts that he would need to add in order to prepare our students for the world in which they live in? I'm going to propose four. The first of which is the gift of understanding circuitry. Our students need to learn to harness the power that drives everything that we have, our computers, our televisions, the lights here, the microphones, and provide us this entertainment. Whether it's in exploring with LEDs and coin batteries or circuit tape and conductive ink, they need to understand and, par and harness. It's one thing to teach Ohm's law, and it's another thing to have students use and apply it in order to make a circuit light. The second gift is the gift of computational thinking or sequential thinking or scientific thinking. To be able to set out a set of instructions so that they can control the devices rather than having the devices control them. So whether it is through a board game such as Robot Turtles or the use of robots such as the B-Bot or Sphero or through coding like Scratch, they have the ability to do this. And even if they never code, they now have a lens in which to view and analyze the world. The third gift that I propose is really taking some of Froebel's early gifts, which included weaving and stitching, and taking the two gifts that I've added to e-textiles. Show me a child who is not amazed and doesn't want to have those light-up shoes. Isn't it better to be able to have them be able to create their own clothing, to create their own light-up shoes, whether they're in kindergarten or they're in 12th grade? The last gift is the one that I really struggled to get into how it fit on in, but we really need to give our students the gift of being able to use tools, to be able to open up those devices which are closed and invisible to see how things work. This is something which is lost in students today, and they do tremendous work designing behind a two-dimensional pane of glass, but they often don't understand how the physical three-dimensional components fit and work, and so we need to do that. So when we look back to what Froebel proposed back in 1838, what he did is he came up with the first prototype of the maker movement, that classroom, that workshop, that allows everybody to have free work. 
And my challenge to you is to be able to create these spaces in your location so that we can tear down the walls and provide a launch pads for students to inspire. Thank you.